I do, and welcome back to Paul's Marthorne Viaduct Wander or Marthorne Wander and River Valley Ride. Okay, so you've just seen uh, seen me puffing and panting, or heard me puffing and panting, walking up those steps. I was so disappointed, uh, as I said on uh, on the cap cam, that uh, couldn't get across the viaduct to look at the lovely views. Uh, but I guess you know it's a prime spot for uh, suicide, you know, into that river. So health and safety being what it is. So I've just taken that nice photograph. I was so annoyed that that van was there. Uh, he was on his lunch and couldn't very well say, oh, you know, can you just move your van <laughs> to the other side? Uh, it would have been nice for him to actually do that of his own accord, but um, but he wasn't going to do that. So so there we are, hey ho. So uh, yeah, so I, uh, with the uh, with the line closing in uh, 1957 I think that's that predates uh, Dr. Beeching uh, as, as far as I know Dr. Beeching's time was uh, in the 1960s and um, the 1957 time probably before him so if somebody knows a definite answer to that um, please let me know please comment but um, Certainly, the uh, photograph that I uh, included of the uh, of, a, of a train going over the line, you know, you can just imagine um, what it what it what it would have been like. You know, it would have just been a normal a normal branch line. Um, just such a pity that uh, that nobody can maybe you know see the foresight in uh, in reintroducing it uh, for tourism. Maybe one day they will, and when they were looking at this video, maybe long after I've uh, departed this mortal coil, uh, then you'll be able to say, well, you know, you were on the right lines, Paul, and uh, look, they've opened it, and uh, so there we are. So no point commenting when I'm dead and buried. So, <laughs> well, not buried, but cremated. Right, on a, on a more cheery note, uh, we're just joining the A680, uh, coming from Great Harwood towards um, Portfield Bar, and then on to this road actually leads to, you know, like Clither or the A59, and if you go wet, uh, west, that takes you to Lango, to the Shazian, to Preston, to Liverpool, and you know so but we're going to Sabden um, and then we're going from Sabden over the Nicker Pendle past Wellsprings now Wellsprings as you'll see on the left is a Mexican uh, restaurant and uh, we called in there uh, one time uh, it was New Year time and uh, we had a we had a snack and oh by golly it was good it was very tasty so we'll have to uh, we'll have to go back. We we were in the car that day, as I say, it's probably five years ago. You know how time goes. So now this is um, this is what I would call Steve's 900 Hornets uh, view here. I'm gonna call it Steve's view just after this signpost where these trees are. Um, it's getting a bit overgrown now, but there, just 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 gone past, uh, is he puts his bike on the footpath, and he he stands there with his camera running on his on his helmet, and takes the view. It's a beautiful view going towards Painterwood and uh, and uh, Worley. So we'll call it Steve's view. I'm sure he'll like that. So I've named it after you, Steve. Check him out, Steve's 900 Hornet. His YouTube channel. He's a he's a Lancashire lad like me, and uh, he's good. He really is good. So we're just coming up towards the uh, turning here. Uh, if you carry on that set of lights, is Springwood. There's a picnic site on your right hand side, which usually has a 
uh, an ice cream van there for for um for before you go, before or after you've been for your walk very busy road this this is the a671 so we're just going up here now this road here um whenever i come up here i'm always reminded of a sad time um the golf the golf course is over the other side of those trees on your left uh yeah sad time because back in um 1990 would it be 1990 yes 1990 um would be late spring early summer late spring probably um i came along this road here on our then uh bike and it was a kawasaki gt 750 and there is a photograph of it now that was our last bike before samantha came along our daughter and so before i part exchanged the bike uh, for a, a car dealership in Great Harwood. Or well, anyone who knows uh, Great Harwood, up uh, Delph, Delph Lane, I think it is, don't know exactly who we're talking about. This is 1990, so you'll be able to say, Steve, for instance, will know exactly who I'm on about. And I'd, um, the story is, is um, before this ride, I'll take you back a, a few two or three weeks whatever I'd gone up this this Delph Lane um, on on the bike and we were looking at buying a car changing the bike and for a car because Samantha was on the way and although we could have got a side car because loads of people said oh you can get a side car you know um, no, a motorcycle is two wheels. Um, now you've got such things as spiders, um, which, you know, obviously are three wheels. But if you're going to put three wheels when you're a family, um, unless you get a, a Reliant Robin or something like that, uh, you've got to get four wheels. And uh, sadly, we couldn't afford the bike and the car at that time. So I'd gone up this this road because I'd I'd seen um, I'd seen that this old car is in the probably in the Telegraph, and I'd gone up to the garage, and this guy come out, and he asked if I could if he could help me. You see, so I thought, well, how did he know? I might have been just turning around, you know, but he was um, he was a keen biker. As well as a car dealership, a car dealer. So he obviously put two and two together, and thought this guy wants a car, and I did. So we part exchanged the bike. It was a, a 1985 C Reg GT 750, and. Uh, Beautiful, beautiful bike. You know, it was so advanced. I mean, it was 1985, but it had self-cancelling indicators. You know, which I thought were really uh, ahead of its time. Really, four-cylinder, shaft drive, first shaft drive bike we had. So that's uh, the last chain. The last previous bike, the 400 Honda, that was the last chain drive that we uh, we had. So never again. We'll not go back to a chain. Because once you've had a shaft. I don't think you go back to a chain, really. Anyway, um, so on the morning that we uh, collected the car, or I kept collected the car, Lynn wasn't with me, uh, I went over to Great Harwood, and before doing the deed, I, I rolled along this road here and uh, didn't come all the way to Sabden as far as this but I came on this road 
and turned around and went back to um, to Great Harwood. And I was so sad, I was so sorry, because, you know, we'd been motorcycling for um, 10 years, nearly. Um, it, you know, from August 1980 to, this was spring 1990, so almost 10 years. And uh, there we were, you know, getting a car. Now, what we got was a 1980, funny that, isn't it, keeping with the year, a 1980 Ford Fiesta and that's the car there that's parked at the uh, side of um, Lynn's parents former house and uh, yeah so it was a W red so it was 1980-81 and uh, after a small problem was sorted with the carburetor there was a, a switch some kind of switch, electrical switch on the carb, which when you shut, shut, you know, turn your ignition key off, the ignition off, this this switch cuts the fuel, or you know, I guess did it. Well, it weren't working, so it weren't turning off, and it was running on. So anyway, um, Ian at work, the mechanic at work, he um, he sorted it. And uh, obviously, you know, his knowledge and and uh, he sussed out what the problem was. And after that, it was it was absolutely spot on. We had one or two little niggles with it, but we had a holiday in Devon uh, in 1991. And uh, when Sam was six months old, and it was uh, it was a fantastic holiday. Now we couldn't have done that. We stayed in a caravan. We couldn't have done that um, in on a bike. Obviously, we, we'd have had to hire a car, which was very expensive. Um, but apart from anything else, um, Lynn needed uh, wheels for. Um, she got a job, part-time job in a in a supermarket in a spa in the evenings. So as I finished work at five and went home got home about 20 past five we'd have a, a natter and a catch up and then she'd leave for work so she worked six till ten in the evening and I put Sam to bed so it was a joint effort and I thoroughly enjoyed it and I really feel so sorry for parents young parents now who either have to work because they for full time I mean because they financially have to um, or they want their independence but to me they're putting uh, material things before what's important in life and that's you know raising your family you don't have children to um, you've got to sacrifice your former life you really have it's on hold for the next 18 years so but I think they don't get that now the, uh, a lot of young parents they want this independence well sorry but what do you have your kids for just a little thought so anyway so she needed uh, as I said the wheels to go to work I'm just pulling in here just to take a couple of photographs of this beautiful view on the left there that's the river valley wonderful view so yeah, so we had this car. Now, another twist to the story. Um, one evening, shortly after changing the, uh, the the bike for the car, um, there's somebody at our door. So the doorbell rings, so it goes to the front door. And there's a chap stood there. And I thought, I know him. You know, when you look at someone, you think you know him, but you can't place him. And lo and behold, it was Mr. Ingham, a teacher that taught at my and Lynn's junior school, primary school, in the early 70s. You know, this is, um, you know, pre-1973-4. 
and um, or four or five because I I left in seventy four, and Lynn left in seventy five. Because she's six months younger than me. So, so there he was, this <laughs> Mr. Ingham, on the doorstep of my house. <clears throat> Um, this is 1990, yeah, it must have been 1990, so this is what, 74, 84, that's 16 years, it doesn't seem much time now really, but when you're 27, 16 years ago is a long time, um, as, as anybody who's uh, in their 50s now will, will back up because time just absolutely motors on now and what he wanted on the as you saw on the photograph of the GT 750 we'd put a Rickman fairing on it full fairing and he wanted to take the fairing off he wanted to make the bike um, as stock as possible I mean when I think that fairing if I'm if I remember rightly in 19 when did we get this 750 80 88 I think or 89 we didn't have it long and I like my furrings you know hence the FJR you know they offer good protection from the elements and they look well but of course in those days you put like Rickman furrings on you know like that one on the photograph and it was like 600 pounds you know that was a lot of money in 1988 it really was I was probably on 60 60 pounds a week so it added quite a lot to the price of the bike but you were willing to pay it I like the uh, I like my comforts so he wanted to take that off And put the headlight back on, you know, and it's on its original fittings. Well, I had all the fittings, so luckily I kept hold of them. And uh, I was so, I were very organised then. I'm uh, I'm not so organised now, sadly, but I was then. I'm just breaking off my tail a minute. This is coming into Pendleton now. Our or the member of parliament the river valley member of parliament lives uh, i think he lives in this village and that's nigel evans and i'd like to ask nigel evans how on earth he allows this road in this delightful little village to get in the state that it's in it's an absolute death trap the only thing i can think of is that most but look at it most people have four-wheel drives around there so It'll be like going over pebbles for them. But uh, on a bike, on small cars, absolutely disgraceful. So if you're watching this, Mr. Evans, do something about those roads in your area. Right, back to my tail. So luckily, I had the bits, and so I gave them to him. And I couldn't believe it. I said, hello, Mr. Ing, and you know, I was... I was uh, 11 when I last saw him, 10 or 11, I think he wasn't, uh, I don't think he was my my teacher, because I think it was Mr. Haydock, I think he taught Lynn, but how strange, eh, what a small world, and the only time that we ever saw that bike uh, was in Clitheroe, we, we were near, um, I think it was parked opposite where Dawson's is um, now whether he lived in Clitheroe I don't know I suspect he did and we saw it it was um, C for Charlie 726 H for Harry F for Foxtrot M for Mother no hang on C F C726 HFM, CFM, C, something like that. I can't remember. Anyway, end of my tale, end of the video. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.